Thank you very much, Dr. Namon. Sawadika. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, what I'm going to do in the next, uh, say, about 50 minutes uh, is to share with you about how we can enhance learning experiences through digital flipbooks. And it's one of the things that we can do for 21st century learning. How many of you are familiar with flipbooks? Okay, we've got a couple, three, four people. My own people don't count. Okay. And um, flipbooks is not new. It's been around for quite a while, a few years. But we have tried to experiment with flipbooks in such a way that it will make learning more interesting. Actually, it's work in progress. We've only been working on it for the last um, three, four months. First of all, first, firstly, to just uh, find a platform. First of all, to, to, to see what platforms are available and then trying out with one or two platforms and then zero in, zeroing in to just one platform uh, to adopt for our creation. So let me just begin uh, by number one. Uh, let me just see here. Okay, in introduction to the university. This is how Wawasan Open University looks like. It's not the typical campus university like some of your campuses, big and um, maybe a few thousand acres or a few hundred acres large. I think we only have about four acres, I think. But we have a heritage building in the front, which uh, this building, in the, the, white, the white building, is almost 100 years old. And in Penang, we have to keep this, uh, this buildings beautiful. So it has to be maintained. And um, <clears throat> the family who used to stay here is actually um, uh, started with uh, this um, person represented by the statue. His name is Yap Cho Yi, and uh, he had bequeathed this home and the land and some other properties to the university or to education, basically. And then sometime in about, uh, in about 2006, um, the family decided that a university will be set up and this house here uh, will be given to the university for our use. And then we got donation from a philanthropist who built this 12-storey building uh, to be used as seminar rooms and offices. So this is Wawasan Open University in Penang. If you're visiting, you're welcome to visit. It's also a university by the sea. <clears throat> Behind this building is actually the ocean. So um, to the right of my own office, if I come early enough in the morning, I can see this view. Okay, what I'll do this uh, next 50 minutes is to uh, introduce to you the topic and then followed by a break. Uh, this is where my latest version couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, what you call this, it, 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 um, it um, uh, crashed, yeah? So actually what will, what will happen is uh, between about uh, 2.15 to... Uh, 2.30, yeah? is that 2.45? Okay, between 2.15 to 2.45, we'll have uh, Ayn, who will speak to us about what, the lect about what the workshop will be like. And after that, we go for a break. When you come back, we'll do the hands-on. Yeah? How many of you plan to stay until the end? <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, we'll see how it goes. You're welcome to stay, you're welcome to, of course, you know, learn from other people as well. Okay, so I'll introduce a bit about uh, the flip books and everything else, and then what matters most, I'll highlight a few things, and I go into student engagement. I'm sure some of you have heard about student engagement, but let me just share with you some of the things that I uh, believe all of us should know about, and then talk about the learning experience that we should create for our students now, and one of the ways is through the digital flip books and then some final words. Okay, we are all in the 21st century. What is it that we should be providing to our learners in the 21st century? What, what should learning be like? This morning we heard uh, three keynotes and uh, they're all equally impressive because we're all talking about 21st century. 
we are all talking about the need to go into the 21st century, whether it is through MOOCs, whether it is through OERs or open education. Um, and um, the fact that right now, we have this millennial generation of learners, and they are a different sort of learners. If we do the same things that we used to learn, you know, the way we used to learn, and if we repeat that today, the learners will be very bored, right? Yes or no? Yes, <laughs> okay. So we have to do something more exciting. And uh, also, I think earlier also this morning, we talked to uh, everyone, if they talked about MOOCs, they also talked about the fact that you can do micro-credentials, the fact that you can have credit banks. And yes, we are talking about flexible learning pathways. In Malaysia, just um, uh, last Wednesday, uh, I attended a session with the Ministry of Education who announced to the whole higher education community that we will start having um, micro-credentials service learning and also to strengthen MOOCs and with micro-credentials we are encouraged to offer packages small packages and when they complete all these packages they can earn their degree so pretty much like the credit bank system so we're all going towards the same thing and uh, the other thing is what was an open university is an open and distance learning university just like Sukhothai Tamirat. And with an open university, the struggles and the challenges that the learners go through are a bit different from the traditional universities. Most of them are working. Most of them have lesser time to, 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 to study or to do their assignments. And uh, most of them don't really have time to read whatever we ask them to read. And... Uh, what we are trying to do then at Wawasan Open University now is to create uh, digital, flag, uh, digital flip books to see if that can make a difference. Instead of going to the LMS and getting all the other resources, what if everything is in the flip book? So that is what we are experimenting on at the moment. And uh, following that, of course, oh, so sorry, I'm not used to this uh, device. Am I going? Yeah. Okay, so the thing is, um, you know, with all these challenges and all that, what next? So I've just mentioned that we are trying out the digital flip books. <coughs> now, when we did a survey, or not, not survey, when we uh, looked in the, into our database, and, and we looked at it uh, in the um, middle of March 2019, about 23,120 students have registered with what was an open university. We found that, to our surprise, 62% are very young. It used to be that distance learning universities have students who are 30 or 35 years old and above. But now, they're very young. 62%, 19 to 30 years old. So that means we have to do things differently. And being young, they have a short attention span, don't you agree? They are the uh, smartphone or iPhone or you know, tablet generation. They don't read books. Neither do I anymore, actually. <laughs> because now I just uh, try to get a short, uh, what you call this, uh, short snippets of books or just uh, read some um, articles you know, or watch YouTube videos. So let's not expect our students to want to read fat books to learn about the course. So we realized that we need to have biteable size of learning content and biteable size of learning delivery. So that is our premise. And students also want quick results or just in time, yeah? Just, just in time, knowledge and announcement and so on. Now they want feedback. They also want very fast response time. When they communicate to the lecturers, they want response time within within minutes if possible, within hours at the latest, not in one day, not in two days. I remember when I was working at an, another open university, let's say 10 years ago, where our standard was, they will be responded to, yeah, if the students ask questions, they will get a response within two days. 
But nowadays, we are trying to make it shorter and shorter. And of course, our, our students are using social media yeah? so that you can get response, faster response. And um, of course, they also want recognition for effort, so we have to put in the badges and the mini certificates, like the micro-credentials. And they want more flexibility in terms of timetabling, in terms of materials, in terms of, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, what matters most, I think, for an open distance learning university or for universities that offer MOOCs? Students should matter the most. If we don't think about the students, they'll come into a MOOC and enroll for a while. They don't feel like they're engaged, they will go away. And then our efforts are, you know, fruitless. Okay? And um, the, the fact that our students later on will be caretakers of the society and influence our future means that we have to do a good job with the young people now. I can imagine myself, I, I, sometimes I ask myself, okay, let's say in 20 years' time. In the 20 years' time, we could be old, we, you could be older, we could be having uh, all kinds of illnesses. I'm always wondering, who are the doctors and the nurses who will take care of us? If we educated them uh, uh, correctly now, with, this, with the right values, with the right attitudes, they will be good doctors to us and caregivers. If not, then, you know, we have a problem. And um, we also should equip... Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button, so sorry. <laughs> okay, I have to get it because the button is here, you know. Usually it's on the side, okay. All right, so we have to equip them uh, with ASK. What is ASK? Attitude, skills, and knowledge. It used to be enough when we just educate them with the knowledge. But today, we have to build in the skills. How do we provide the skills to them? If we ask, the, if we ask the employers today, they will say our, well, this is Malaysia's problem, yeah? They will say that the, our, our young graduates don't have presentation skills, don't have problem-solving skills, lack in creative skills. Uh, they, don't, they can't really write. What else? So many things. You know, Malaysia has so many problems with the young graduates. So we have to change. Okay? And uh, also the attitude. <clears throat> Somehow we have lost some values along the way. Um, our young generation don't have the same level of values as the older generation did. I don't know whether it's happening in Thailand or in other Asian countries. But in Malaysia, I think we're losing the values. Um, the sense of respect for the older generation is not the same as, as my generation, for example. You're nodding your head, is it? <laughs> you have that, that problem? Yes, yeah, so, so, you know, so our materials should include, as much as possible, all the three, um, uh, what you call this, um, features of learning, so that we build in the attitude, put them, give them the right skills that the employers want, and the, the skills that will be of value to them so that they can not only be employable, but in fact maybe become entrepreneurs, yeah? which, which is happening a lot nowadays. Yeah? People do online businesses and so on. And also, how many of you know about deeper learning? It's not only learning from the textbooks, but it's also learning... Um, from the textbook, after that, it's leading into other things and other things and other things as deep as they want. Yeah? So let's, let's see how we can provide opportunities for deeper learning. The other thing is, educators today needs to do what needs to be done. I find that among my colleagues, maybe only about 20% will do what it takes. Others will do whatever is enough for them to be lecturers. We are agreeing. Yes? No? <laughs> okay. But to a certain extent, there are people who just want to teach the easier way, but some people realize that we need to do more these days. So designing a MOOC, for example, takes a lot more effort, right? Compared to just going in and giving a lecture. So we are talking about designing a flip book, which could be uploaded into a MOOC platform. And uh, that also means that we don't take shortcuts. Uh, we have to do a lot more. 
the good thing is once we have done it, once we have designed it right, once we have created the product, we can uh, relax the next semester. How many of you have created a MOOC? Not yet. How many of you have created learning materials, the digital format, let's say? Not yet also, but some do, some have. It takes time to create, right? But after that, you can reuse yeah, uh, uh, more and more uh, and maybe improve it. So it's, it's, it's good that way. Okay, our next topic is student engagement. It's a topic that has been researched for many, many years, maybe easily solid research in the last uh, uh, 10 years. If you go online and Google, let's say you go into Google Scholar and you Google student engagement, higher education, you'll find millions of articles, millions of research studies. And um, I say millions, but easily hundreds yeah, of research studies. And the findings generally agree that student engagement leads to student success. How? When a student is engaged, engaged with what? Learning materials, with the facilitators, with the campus, with um, uh, university administrators, with their own course, uh, course mates. When they are engaged, they will be satisfied. They will feel, they will have this feeling of satisfaction. And when they are satisfied, they, there will be student retention. And for a university like Wawasan Open University, student retention matters the most. Because a lot of students, especially the adult students, come in into an open university and quickly drop out because they realize after so many years of not being in education or studying, they realize that it's not as easy as they thought. So sometimes they drop out. So for us, student retention is very important. So we have to engage them so that they are satisfied and then they keep coming back as students uh, over the next you know, four or five years or six years even. And eventually, they will graduate. So student success means graduation. And uh, so what this all means is, is we have to engage them with proper learning design. All right, learning design. So maybe I can mention a few things more about it. And uh, again, if you look at, uh, if you look for images, yeah, when you Google, if you look for images, somehow I think my image was halfway done. My, my notebook wasn't able to support quite a bit just now. So, but if you look at images, you just Google now even for student engagement, click on images, you'll see a lot of uh, visuals uh, on student engagement. And you just click on any of them, you will see, um, uh, quite a bit of information or even research findings on student engagement. Now, let me see if I can play this video. Uh, how do I play this one, is it? Actually, actually it doesn't work here. Yeah? Uh, there should be a bar at the bottom. There should be a, or maybe this one. Just a quick intro to student engagement, actually. But in the US, there is a national study on student um, engagement. And uh, we, could, we could start our own, actually, uh, to have a national survey. And then we can compare uh, different universities. And these are just some of the, um, um, I don't know what you call them, headlines of several articles on student engagement. So for example, 
the value of student engagement for higher education quality assurance, 2006. Students' engagement in first year university, and usually they say student engagement is the most important in the first year, and uh, that's uh, 2008. What we're learning about student engagement from the National Survey, uh, National Survey on Student Engagement in the US, benchmarks for effective educational practices. What we are learning about student engagement from NS, okay, that's the same thing, sorry. And the next one, uh, defining student engagement, what it is all about. Framing student engagement in higher education, first and second generation college students. A comparison of their engagement and intellectual development. Unmasking the effects of student engagement on first year college grades and persistence. Okay, and more and more things like that. How do we achieve student engagement? I think the flip book, if we design it correctly, we can achieve the student engagement. Engagement with the learning material, engagement with the learning task, or engagement with um, exercise, you know, uh, reinforcement activities. So what, what, what people are saying also is that we need to provide a learning set a learning centered approach so that students are engaged you know we've heard about student centric learning we've heard about learning centered approach so that is about understanding what the learner prefers in terms of the way they learn understanding what the students need especially today's students they want bite size they want just in time and then and, and then after that for the facilitator to be to be providing effective facilitation of learning through new or innovative ways. So MOOCs is an example, uh, e-learning is an example, even providing infographics instead of the normal kind of graphics is another example. And then if you are familiar with learning theory, social constructivist learning approaches will work best. And this actually uh, means the deeper learning. We, we should be achieving collaboration between learners so that they get into these deeper forms of learning more meaningful and more relevant for them. Even involving uh, industrial uh, examples or even sometimes relationships with industry somehow to be built in. Okay, another uh, set of uh, researchers says that student engagement is linked to undergraduate academic achievement, student attribution, student retention, student motivation, and institutional success. Another one says when learners are engaged, they are shaping and leading their own learning and education. I'm just building um, a, a, a set of a series of justification for us to, to go into new ways of of um, of um, a new ways of uh, learning. Yeah, for students, that flipbook is just one example. Okay, next, uh, student engagement holds the magic wand, uh, making it possible for students to succeed and develop their potential. Or it says students who are more engaged learn more. I think if, if, any, if you forget everything else, if you remember this one, students who are more engaged learn more. Even that is a very powerful uh, achievement, yeah? If we reach that stage. Others, when learners feel involved and engaged in the course, they perform well. And the desired learning objectives are achieved. Student engagement is directly or indirectly related to improvement in student learning. So that's about student engagement, just a little bit. I told you there were millions of articles, and I just pulled out some of the article's uh, findings. Again, uh, student engagement is, uh, if you do it well, you'll get student satisfaction. When they're satisfied, they will keep coming back to the university. Or if they take one MOOC, they'll take another one, another one, another one, yeah? And then after that, they graduate. And of course, these are the other things. Uh, if we look at all these articles, this is what they're saying. So there are so many benefits when we engage the students. And at the op um, Wawasan Open University, these are the reasons they give as their challenge when they cannot submit assignments on time. So one student will say, I'm traveling currently in New York. I have a very tight work and uh, work what? and maybe some other schedule, and I will try to complete my assignments without delay. This is when they are contacted, how come you haven't submitted your assignments? So these are the answers that they gave. I would like to seek for your approval 
to extend my TMA1 submission. TMA stands for Tutor Mark Assignment. I am tasked for an overseas job assignment and managing a project for both Singapore and India sites. So some of our students are really, you know, really busy traveling. Okay. I would like to request for an extension due to I am very busy at work with tight deadlines to meet uh, Bursa Malaysia and board reporting at work. Bursa Malaysia is the um, stock exchange. Yeah? Okay. It is a new portfolio undertaken by me. I didn't edit the grammar. Yeah? Okay. I couldn't finish my assignment due to audit at my working place and I'm working on the banking field. So these are some of the examples of challenges and then indeed another few more days to complete my assignment happened due to daughter's admission in the hospital. She has bad lung infection. Sorry, just got back tonight from overseas due to personal reasons. My husband's brother was in an accident and hospitalized. Neck and spine trauma will submit by this week. Last one. I would like to request delivery time TMA1 extended for reasons which cannot be avoided. I had to go take care of my father at my hometown, Kelantan. Kelantan is a state in Malaysia. My father has stroke level 4. If needed a letter from the hospital, I can attach. So what does this tell you? These are the realities of adult students, students who are taking... Five more minutes. Okay. Um, uh, students who are taking uh, open uh, and distance learning uh, courses. How come five minutes? Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. S let me just, uh, just to give you an example of what uh, we want students to do now. Now, all, of, all universities, I think almost all universities now have a have, um, learning management system, right? Okay, when, when a student logs into the university, in my case, I'm not a student, I'm an administrator. Not five minutes, yeah? Okay, <laughs> okay. When, 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 when a student logs in, they don't see the exact screen that I see, but this is uh, more or less. They will see announcements, and then, um, oh, this is not showing. How do I get this to show, eh? How come, yeah? Um, it's showing the slide, but I have already gone into the LMS. How come the, the screen doesn't change? Maybe my, my team members know what to do. Yeah, how come it doesn't change? Okay, if it doesn't change, it's okay. Now, when you go into your LMS, you know, you, your university has an LMS, right? They go in, and then what do they see? They see materials, even MOOC, doesn't matter, LMS or MOOC. They go in, they see the materials, maybe they see video lectures, maybe they see um, uh, audio clips, maybe they see something to be read, they may, maybe they see the forum to go into. All right. Now, we were thinking, so basically, it's like this. They see course materials. They see their assignments. They see other course learning resources. Uh, maybe activities like quizzes and all that. Yeah, Maybe uh, links to YouTube videos. Then they're also asked to participate in online forum discussions. And maybe also connected to the university's other systems that you can use, like Turnitin, you know, Library Portal, and, and so on. Now, what if... Uh huh. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not uh, advancing. Okay. 
Okay. All right. What if instead of the LMS and you go into to get several things, what if they go into a flip book? And that flip book can actually serve like a virtual learning environment. So the flip book will have access to or actually videos, audio files embedded in the pages. So instead of going to the LMS, retrieve video and or click, click, click. You go into the into the digital flip book and the video is right there. All you have to do is play. And then maybe another video one or two pages later. And then after that you also have, for example, um, audio or even text or links to to uh, to uh, journal articles or pages of you know chapters and whatnot or even link to uh, figures yeah illustrations uh, charts or even infographics and then they also let's say have links to learning activities or task or they have access to let's say we want to get a feedback online polls or if they want to do or we want to give them quizzes even for whether for marks or for practice they can go into online quizzes or other things whatever we can think of so just imagine that flipbook becoming like a virtual learning environment for students now you're still in MOOC or LMS but this uh, flipbook when you download you can play it in your uh, tablet or smartphone yeah and so on and you download only once then after that it, it stays in your notebook and I was told that you can print but of course when you print then you cannot play the videos yeah but you can print if, they, if you want or if the students want now this is also similar to the concept of when you have all these materials the concept of pool learning typically we push we if we were the lecturer we give them notes <laughs> uh, we give them things right but now they pull they download that flip book and they learn on their own so they they are more they should be more accountable for their own learning and when they are ready they download and they go through it but the key is to get them engaged with the materials that we have designed all right so this is an example and now this is now I'm not sure whether I can play things because the first time they didn't play but this is a, an example of very very basic uh, flip book I think I'm not able to click here it is here <laughs> it is showing <laughs> here but it's not showing there I'm not sure why technical because it's now connected to the internet it shows <laughs> Then the workshop also may have a problem. We are using a hotspot. Yeah. Ah. Ah, okay, 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 we got it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Technical problem solved. Okay, so this is a very very simple uh, flip book. In fact, these are slides from my presentation. I think three years ago here, and I uploaded it in um, in uh, SlideShare. And then there were slides, yeah. But today, today it is a flip book just by converting the slide into flip book. But this is very, very basic. It didn't do anything more. Okay? <coughs> so there were slides. Whatever videos are embedded, they can still play. Okay, so this is a very simple flip book. How you created your slides is how they uh, turn into flip book. And you can play. I think you can play. Yeah, you can go out and play. Okay, it's only as good as the internet.
but you get the idea, yeah? Whatever videos you embed, you can play. And now again, uh, to continue the, the flip book, it's just like this. So just imagine students uh, downloading into their uh, smartphone or notebooks or PCs, and they just can do this. But it's how you design. Eh? This is from slides to flip book. So it will just look like slides. Yeah. Okay. I will show you some other examples. Mm. How do I get back to my slides? Here is it. Okay. All right. This is another example of a flip book. Again, this is work on progress. I'm supposed, to, well, we are supposed to be able to complete it this weekend for the students. But most of it is in here. We just need to fine tune the content. This is using another software. Okay. We will have a video here. So it's just not embedded yet because waiting for me for my instructions actually is how we done, and um, so you can you can enable anything to be video or to be graphic or to be vid uh, infographics or or audio you know anything. This is something that we are thinking of giving to our students this weekend, I mean next weekend, uh, to help them get started. Okay, so this is again almost plain. Except that we can always put in the videos, whatever videos we want, whatever PowerPoint we want, if we want, yeah? Or even connect to a student portal, you know, any links, we can do that. So this is just now slides to flipbook, now it is PDF to flipbook. All right. Um, Okay, this is another example. At the Open University, uh, at the what was an Open University, every course comes with a, uh, a set of modules, which are written uh, by by lecturers who get paid to do the job. Yeah, and um, there's a course called Computers in the Network Society, usually taken by first year students, and and uh, what. What I don't get is, it's like 300 to 400 pages long, PDF version. No one reads. The tutors are telling us, the uh, administrators, the directors at the, our regional centers are telling us, students don't read. So then I'm thinking, then we still keep giving them. So now, that's why we're experimenting with the flip, good, uh, flip books. Imagine, you know, five pages of reading can be turned into a video, which is maybe four minutes or three minutes, yeah? Or maybe instead of putting things in text, put them on slides, but make the slides interesting. So we give all this uh, learning media at different points in the flip book. And let me just, uh, again, this is work in progress. This is supposed to be ready by January next year, full version. Right now, it's only a concept. Uh, without, without, um, uh, it's got a little bit of, it's got content, but not the instruction for students what to do with the content, yeah? So, like, for example, this is how it looks like. You can even add sound to it. And you can even, uh, if you want, when they go over, they can, they can see something, you know? You, you, you can put links in there. And you can, this is what I meant. You can play videos within the Facebook. Today, computers are all around us. 
From desktop computers to smartphones, they are changing the way that we live our lives. But have you ever asked yourself, what exactly is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. The computer sees data as ones and zeros, but it knows how to web browser, media player, or word processor. Microsoft Windows okay. operating system. So anyway, you get the idea. So just imagine if five pages of text can be create can be uh, transformed into a video. So then, isn't it more interesting for the students instead of reading and reading and reading? Okay. So let's see some other pages. So again, something here. Click me. It says. Now again, depending on the internet speed. Let me just play this one. This one is still spinning. Let me try this one. In the past, there were no mobile phones and no personal computers. At that time, people typed letters on a typewriter or wrote them by hand. Communication was usually done face-to-face -face or over fixed-line telephone networks. The changes that have occurred in the past several decades have led to technological innovations in computing. Today, billion. Okay, so you can put audio. And again, another video. You can put pictures, you know, so many things. Even if you have quizzes, you can put a link there, and it opens up into a quiz. All right, so this is like multimedia, but within a book. Last time we had multimedia on CD-ROM. Multimedia in the LMS, you know. So this is one uh, stop. Okay, go back to the slides. All right, when we talk about content, where do we get the content from? Where can we get this content from? It could be self created things that we do ourselves, it could be OERs. It could be something in the public domain like YouTube, Vimeo videos. Or it could be, if you, if you are creative, get assignments for students to complete. But what they complete is something that they, you can use in the digital flipbook. So you give them a project, let's say, uh, create um, a video on this. And if it's a good video, you can always embed that later on. So again, um, uh, what we are having, what we what we are thinking at the what was an open university is to have this digital interactive flip book, flip books. How it should be designed is we have learning episodes, for example, units or chapters, and then we can have the learning applets. It could be like a subtopic, which is in the form of video or audio or PowerPoint slides or readings, we could have learning, learning nudges. Nudges is like um, before they uh, watch a video, for example, just now on the history of computers, we can ask them, okay, what do you know or how far back can you think of your first, of the first computer that you saw? What was it? And after that, when they have seen the video, uh, then after that you tell them, watch the video below and, and see whether uh, you can learn anything knew about what, how computers existed before even the first computer you know. So that is a nudge. So we nudge them to think, to watch, and then to compare. All right. We also, uh, about two, three weeks ago, we tried to get um, students to give us their initial feedback on the, on the flip books. The flip books, right now, we, I told you we are experimenting. The first one is always the most difficult to do. Takes time, yeah, because it's experimenting. So we, before we went on, we wanted students to tell us what they thought about it. So this is, this is an online survey, about 111 students responded. Um, we gave them some psychological motivation uh, items um, and asked them what they thought about the flip book enhancing their interest in learning. We are talking about open distance learners, yeah? Or even your MOOC learners, they will be like that. Um, 
64.9% say it will enhance their learning. Now, this one is not giving them the flip book and them downloading it yet. We just demonstrated it in the class. So this is based on that limited kind of experience. This is what they're saying. So the rest increase my motivation when I enroll in the next course. That means they use the flip book. Will the flip book enhance them, uh, 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 get them to come back the next semester? 62.2%. Useful to me, 61.3%. Interesting, 66.7%. After going through it, I think I will look forward to the next one, 66.7%. I expect to be satisfied, 72%. And uh, you may say, 60-something percent, 70-something percent is not good enough. It should be 90-something percent. But then if you ask them about the PDF course materials that we're giving them now, they probably will only be 15-20%. So that's a big jump for us. And um, I'm supposed to start at 2.15, but we have Q&A. Yeah? This is my last slide, uh, maybe second last slide. If I were to summarize what we've just said, and if you've slept through the presentation, basically, it's time for us to think about how to engage our students. Let's engage our students, because it's important. And then, it's in the design. How we design the flip book is what's important. If you do slides and you turn it into a flip book, it will be just like slides. If you design a set of materials with videos, with links to audio and all that, so it will be that. And then, if you aim for deeper learning, you have to get them to think. You need to have that learning nudges. And um, uh, basically, with flip books, it allows for learning on the go. You can use your tablets or the smartphones. Uh, students nowadays have some form of personal device, so, so we're letting them go mobile. And also, um, if we use OERs or public domain materials, we can also think about how to get the students to create the materials that we can use in the future. So that's uh, some of the final words. And, fi and after this, next change is our workshop uh, led by my two staff here. Can you stand up? Okay, they will be conducting the hands-on or take you through uh, an online um, course that we have created. And um, I think now what I'd like to invite uh, Noreen to, to share with you what we will do next. Um, hello, hi everyone. So um, I'm going to conduct the workshop with my another teammate, which is Lisa. So I'm Ain actually, because a lot of Thais has been saying to me that it is hard to pronounce my name, which is Ain. So you can just call me Anne. So actually, me and my team are Lisa. So both of us actually have another one partner, which she couldn't attend the workshop today due to health reasons. So I really hope that all of you can give her uh, a prayer so that she can recover really fast and for a speedy recovery. So actually, I am Ayn and I'm actually from um, Open Distance Learning Lab uh, under Prof. Zoraini. So actually at ODL Lab, what we are doing is that um, we are looking into latest uh, educational technology on, um, on how we can improve students' engagement or students' um, learning experiences like um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and as well as Flipbook. This is our baby project for this time being. So, let us start.
Okay, so um, what is interactive digital flipbook? So because everyone here is a bit like serious and some of your guys have been sleepy, so I'll just like walk down the walk down the stairs and be down with you guys. So, um, what is interactive digital flipbook? Because as what you have all known is that the flipbook is not is nothing is nothing new. Everyone has been using this for so long already. So what we are trying to do here is to improve on the design, on how uh, we can better the content, and not just like any videos that we can use. We we are like really looking into how we can have a better quality content, like taking it from uh, OER so that we can produce more. Uh, engaging materials for the learners. As you know, uh, in our university, the content material is like 300 to 400 pages long. So as for me and my, how do I say it, my, um, my peers or everyone around my age, we don't read that much. Like seriously, if I take a look at the 300 or 400 uh, pages long of PDF content and the paragraph are like 10 to 20 <laughs> paragraphs, so it's like, what is that? So we need more visuals, more engaging uh, materials, right? So I think now we are experimenting with uh, interactive digital flipbook and we want to, to know what the learners or the students really say about it. So uh, actually the interactive digital flipbook is an interactive PDF that we can integrate um, the text, audio, still photos, video, graphics and animation. So who knows in future we can also embed um, augmented reality or virtual reality within the flipbook. So that is going to be our next experiment. So uh, actually it can be viewed online and offline. So because not most of the students, sometimes they are in rural areas. They don't know or they don't have uh, any internet access or connection that most of the people in the city have. And most of them are open distance learners. So when we are talking about open distance learners, internet is very important, right? But sometimes we need to have an option where they can go and uh, download the material offline as well. So with digital flipbook, they have the option to download the materials uh, offline as well. So, and it is actually currently used to replace the digital PDF that we have. And uh, we can also make the uh, uh, interactive digital flipbook as uh, reports or magazines. There are many other options for that as well. So, but in Wawasan Open University, we are doing that uh, as our learning materials. And it also can be uploaded to MOOC platform. So it is actually an interesting way to enhance our learning experiences, the learner's motivation, and we've already got the feedback that the learner's motivations are high and they are like open to the ideas of using interactive flipbook into their learning. And, um, and it is intended for educators and learners to learn how to use free flipbook creation software to publish a digital flipbook. This is what we are going to do after this. So, uh, the benefits of uh, interactive digital flipbook. Sorry, I want to ask if I'm speaking too, too fast. Okay, you can understand <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm nervous because I'm, I'm new and I'm young and I'm talking in front of the experts like all of you guys. So, my voice is a bit shaky, but I'm trying to be brave and talk to all of you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> and, um, okay, uh, the benefits of this uh, software or this uh, flipbook content is that it can attract learners and increase the engagement and facilitate their learning. As well as, if you got, the, if you got your learning management systems, you can attach or embed your uh, link to the courses or even to the quizzes and forums to increase the engagement. And then, uh, the course structure, which is what we are going to do after this, is that there are three uh, topics or three stages, which is the first part is the introduction to digital flipbook, which I have already done. And then the step two is developing PDF file using uh, Microsoft Office, which is gonna be done by my um, team here, Lisa. And um, the third one is that we are going to augment the PDF file using free flipbook creation software and in this uh, course uh, in this course we are going to use isu which is the flipbook software that we are going to use to create our content and so it's not over the next 90 minutes also i believe it's going to be shorter so don't worry and uh, we are going to share with you about how to learn develop and augment a digital flipbook flipbook sorry so the first step 
Okay, actually we have uh, our own um, enrollment online where you can go. Uh, the first step is that go to learningfaculty.com. So you can use your phone actually to go there. Learning faculty um, LP courses, LP-courses. So I want to take a look if you can like really access the course. We are giving it to you for free inside the, <laughs> uh, inside the website. And if you uh, register on your course, there are like, it's going to be like two options. Whereby the first option is that you can use either your Facebook or Gmail account and it's going to take you directly to your course curriculum. Because most of you today doesn't bring your laptop with you. So because we are having a different uh, plan actually for you guys. So if you bring your laptops, please bring it out. Because here we give you the content and resources for you to download as well. And uh, for upon enrollment, uh, there's also your resources, but inside the online course that we have given you, we also already provided the links. So don't worry about the long, the long URL there. Just focus on enrolling in the course first. <laughs> if anyone has a problem, you can like raise up your hands and we can go directly to you. Is everyone okay with the enrollment process going on? Or because of the internet is so slow? <laughs> Never mind, we have time. So all of you can enroll in the course. Do you find the enrollment button and the curriculum there that we put? <laughs> 